Since last week Dakota allowed himself to be groomed, this week I wanted to work on picking up his feet. I start by using a rope in case Dakota decides to kick or strike. I can apply pressure with the rope while staying safely out of kicking range. I can only imagine how difficult it must be for a horse to willingly offer up their feet. It seems like something they would be programmed to avoid. Giving up control of their feet means giving up their means of escape. So a lot of trust is involved in picking up and manipulating a horse's feet. I felt fairly confident Dakota wasn't going to strike at me, so I dropped the rope and went in by hand. I do keep a hold of his head just in case he decides to disagree with me. Later I will hold his foot up for longer periods of time and also begin to pick out his feet. The back feet can sometimes be more sensitive than the front feet. Dakota seemed not really to be bothered until the rope began to move around his leg. As with all stimulus before, I didn't want to take the rope away until he would stopped trying to escape. Dakota settled pretty quickly, so he moved on to the other foot. Seeing how Dakota reacted to the rope around his legs, I decided we should probably work on getting the rope all over him. Clearly he needs more work in this area. Aries has continued to work with getting used to a rope and the beginnings of leading. He is still a bit reserved on his left side, and the smaller pen makes it hard for me to really get him to come around on the left when he'd rather put me on the right. I'm getting pretty good at looping the rope around him the way that I want, but he has also figured out how to get rid of the rope. Whether the rope is on or off, I still work on the same things, walking forward when asked, yielding the hindquarters, and changing direction. The one advantage the rope provides is a direct line of communication. I can gently put pressure on the rope to try and indicate to Aries where I want him to go. Aries has gotten pretty good at letting me approach him, so long as I don't raise my arm. This next week, I am really going to work on getting him more comfortable with arm movements when I am close to him. The new round pen is finally finished, 
and Dakota was ready for a test drive. Here he wasn't really listening to my stop request, but when he finally did stop, he came in to me when asked. Dakota's front end is much stickier about yielding than his back end, and his right side is harder than his left. But in any case, I am looking to see him cross over his front legs. Here we continue to work on picking up his feet. He fights me here, so I wait until he relaxes before I let go. Now for the back feet. I didn't use the rope at all and hoped he would resist kicking me, which he did. I do keep a short line to his head. In case he does decide to kick, I can quickly pull his head towards me, which will push the haunches away. We next moved on to more rope work so that Dakota could get used to ropes all over him. I don't want to desensitize him to ropes, but I also don't want him to fear them. When I work with Dakota and he gets confused or wants comfort, he is now seeking me out. This is great, but discipline and respect have to precede affection. So although I want to love on Dakota, he has to respect my boundaries first. Here Dakota gets frightened and takes off. If you can keep a horse's head aimed towards you, their body will follow. But once they get their head turned the other way, the wise thing to do is to let go and let the horse deal with their fear on their own. Once Dakota calmed down, he came to me seeking comfort, as he would in any horse herd. It's nice to see him looking to me for security. Dakota drools more than any horse I've ever met. Salivation is a good sign. A dry mouth would mean fear and stress, but Dakota is particularly adept at blowing bubbles with his saliva. Now that Dakota has worked out a bit of his fear of the rope by himself, he accepts it much more readily when I toss it over his back. He does again get fearful and runs off, but this time he doesn't even make it around the pen once before deciding that what he was doing was kind of pointless. Now we are back to working on personal space. On his right side, Dakota is quite pushy. He will step into me in order to block me from being on his right side. He doesn't like it when I correct him and tries to get even closer. But he has to learn that discipline and respect come before affection. In order to try and help him understand that I want his front end to be still, I apply some light downward pressure on his halter. When working with any horse, you want to try and put them in the position of making the right choice. If you don't help them and tell them they are always wrong, they will lose self-confidence, get nervous, and stop thinking. And of course, playtime is always allowed.
Aries was a little jumpy today. He is still on one of those learning plateaus. I have to remind myself he is progressing, even if it doesn't look like he is. Aries is still uncomfortable with the pole around his back legs, but he is much less resistant this time than he was last week. The smaller pen makes it very difficult to maneuver Aries' feet around and get on his left side. One thing I do like a lot is that Aries is holding a lower head position more often now, which signals more relaxation. Finally, I was able to get him into a position where I could get him to yield both his left and his right sides. In training, I think there are lines. I believe the horse has to put up some effort. They have to try. And each effort should be rewarded. I get the sense that sometimes Aries just doesn't want to try. It's probably because he is scared, which is understandable. But I have to push him to achieve something beyond what he thinks he is capable of. That's how progress is achieved. 